All right, what's up, everybody? Greetings. Mike Wienerbach here. Um, I want to talk about misconceptions about fat loss. And what I mean by this, there are certain buzzwords or ideas that go around and they basically pollute people's minds and heads and they distract them what actually matters. So I'm going to dismantle them one by one, hopefully. So number one is my metabolism is slow or I'm too old. So metabolism or age is basically related to two things, level of activity and amount of muscle mass. Meaning you can be very young, but very sedentary with very little muscle mass and you will have a slow metabolism. Or you can be older like me in my 40s and have sort of good amount of muscle and therefore have a rather high metabolism because you move a lot, okay? So the body aging is basically breakdown or failure, right? So muscles are not being used, joints are getting creaky and so on and so forth, but that can be prevented to some extent by working out, okay? So nobody's metabolism is so slow that they couldn't lose weight because if that were the case, nobody would die from hunger. There would always be one guy whose metabolism is too slow to lose weight and he would live forever, even though he's starving, right? So that makes zero sense. So the metabolism being slow for the most part, what you're saying is like, I don't have enough muscle and not active enough. Well, the solution is obviously right there. Two is I have to eat according to my blood type. So the blood type diet came out, I know, 10 years ago, maybe about 15, and it grouped humans into A, B, and then A, B, O, and O, I believe. And so one type was eating the hunter diet and the, the, the gatherer diet, the agriculture diet, and so on and so forth. That is complete nonsense, okay? You cannot group billions of people by force. So, so what if your blood type is the agrarian, but you live like in a hunting village or the other way around, are you gonna die? The only good thing about the um, blood type diet is that it basically, no matter what blood type, what type of diet they cram you into, there's no fast food allowed or junk food or processed foods. So that's an improvement. But to say like, oh, you're type A, you can only eat like legumes and grains and, 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 and sheep's milk, that's complete nonsense. We do know that certain blood types have a proclivity for certain diseases, but it's nothing to do with nutrition, okay? The diet, you cannot say that somebody who is type A and lives in China, whereas some guy who has type A blood and lives in Belgium, they don't have access to the same foods. So one of them must be living miserably, right? So you can see how that concept is just failure. Then another one is like these food allergenic tests that are hip right now, like everybody's being tested and comes back that they are related to this and that. So like, so people are allergic to tilapia, but not to sole, which is also a fin fish. So which one is it, right? Or broccoli, but not cauliflower. And everybody's always allergic to soy and corn and red meat, but not other mammals. So no, no. Food sensitivities cannot be tested via blood. So if you were to go to a proper doctor, they would test you for certain substances such as histamines or lectin or the food mass, which are basically short uh, sugar alcohols that are being used in protein bars and they make people's lives miserable. So, or there would be cross interaction with medicine. So for instance, um, I have to take lithium for my bipolar condition and it reacts with grapefruit juice or grapefruit. So after two, three days of drinking grapefruit juice, I got so sick. I mean, I didn't attest for it. Like I would gain 10 pounds of water. I could hardly walk. I was exhausted and I was throwing up. So if you would react the same way like that to chicken, you would know, trust me. So these kids, they business tell you like, what you're eating a lot of, okay? Also, imagine this. So you have a group of people, say POWs, right? They're all in the POW camp and they're all eating the same food. So by default, there would be a couple guys that couldn't digest the food. And then according to the logic of these people, they couldn't lose weight, but everybody's losing weight. Also, if you were allergic to the foods you're eating and you wouldn't handle them, you would be real thin because you couldn't handle the nutrients and the calories wouldn't go in. Instead, if you're not losing weight, always go back to Occam's razor. The most likely scenario is that you eat too many calories. So food sensitivity 
don't waste money as kids like it's a waste of money okay then there's insulin insulin makes you, insulin just is okay insulin shuttles via glut 4 nutrients into the muscle cell that's a good thing that's a recover from training that's how you stay alive okay people say i'm insulin resistant how do you know that like to do know that you would have to spend a day in a lab glucose injections blood sugar measured all the time so like over 24 hour periods and so forth and let's say even if you were in, uh, insulin resistant right not diabetic but let's say pre-diabetic the laws of the universe will still apply to you to lose weight you have to, you would need a calorie deficit now you would probably have to what your carbs want in somebody who's not insulin resistant but stop self-diagnosing that makes no sense leave that to qualified individuals uh, sleep so not sleeping is bad okay and interrupted sleep is bad it will harm your health it will make you age early and so on and so forth but the question is will it make you gain weight and the answer is no lack of sleep will not magically put on weight lack of sleep will soften your willpower to resist certain foods increase your cravings for crappy foods and your hunger overall so what you do in reaction to the lack of sleep that of course could make you gain weight but the lack of sleep by itself would not cause that okay because trust me i'm the worst sleeper on the planet i would be obese if that was the case and the same goes for stress people say like i'm so stressed out i can't lose weight i'm like hmm if you take a fat burner the fat burner drives up adrenaline that then drives up cortisol cortisol releases glucose in the bloodstream so you can run away from the saber-toothed tiger or whatever you burn the glucose you lose weight right that's what the fat burner does stress does the exact same thing so one makes you lose weight and makes you gain weight that makes no sense okay now again stress especially constant stress is bad for you but stress in itself is a good thing training is stressful to your body your body adapts and gets better without stress you would die okay now chronic stress of course can have issues in terms of heart health and so forth but we're talking about weight gain stress does not make you gain weight stress eating makes you gain weight okay and then there is the type of diet so people say oh i cannot lose weight on keto no you cannot you can lose weight in a calorie deficit okay that's it so what you choose to achieve the calorie deficit is really up to you you can go on the twinkies diet you can go on a keto diet you can go low fat low carb but you need to have a calorie deficit so you see where i'm going all this essentially boils down that you need to have a calorie deficit whether you are insulin resistant which you do not know unless you actually test for that whether your thyroid is slow which also you don't know until you do blood work um, if you were to be allergic to certain foods you would know um, the same with gluten there's no gluten sensitivity without celiac disease okay get out of your heads that's nonsense there are also no fat burning foods no food burns fat there are also no fat gaining foods except the ones that you just eat too much of it so people get so caught up in these details that they forget that you know the greater picture is always how much have you eaten and how much have you trained right and all the other stuff matters very very little okay and with that my god